on to our uh, uh, Stillwell uh, banquet this evening to support our uh, student athletes. Um, this evening, uh, thank you for attending. And uh, uh, again, student athletes, thank you for what you have done this year in, our, in the 2017-2018 year. Uh, parents, uh, thank you for uh, bringing them to the games, uh, traveling, and, and just support uh, for what you do. We thank you for that also. And uh, family and friends for coming tonight. Uh, this is a special night to recognize all our student athletes uh, for what they've done. Um, and once again, uh, thank you for supporting us um, for being here. Uh, as we begin, uh, I'll turn it over to Sib Wolf. He is from Calvary Southern Baptist Church, and he will open up with, with the word of prayer. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Right. That's how we do it at church, too, same way. Uh, I want to read a scripture before we pray uh, tonight. Uh, before I do, I want to say thank you, too, to uh, the staff, everybody. Everything that you do, man, we appreciate you. Uh, the student athletes, uh, watch some of you grow up playing ball, and, man, it, it's been fun. Thank you for, for what you do. Uh, Psalm 139, verse 14. The Bible says, I will praise you because I've been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous, and I know this very well. Uh, just thinking about being here tonight and praying, I was thinking about that verse. Uh, because uh, we're able to do what we do because of our Creator. And I just want to say thank you guys for what you do. We appreciate you very much. If you would, let's pray. Father God, Lord, we bow in your presence today. Just thankful. For another day, Lord, I thank you for this school, the staff, and uh, Lord, everything that they do. Father, I know there's a lot that they do that nobody ever sees or notices, um, but God, you do. And Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for their hearts. And Lord, I thank you for the student athletes, Lord, that uh, the abilities you've given them. Lord, we, we recognize you tonight and we say thank you. We pray that you would bless them, Lord, bless the seniors as they graduate and they move on. God, we ask you to continue to watch over them and as they take another uh, step uh, towards a, a new chapter in their lives, Father. Bless them. Bless them all, Father. Bless their homes, their families, their lives, and all that they do. God, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, just a little instruction before we begin. As we call up the coaches, we're going to introduce uh, and give out awards to their to their uh, respective uh, sport. And uh, when they call up you as a student athlete, come up here. And if someone's taking pictures, you're welcome to take pictures. But uh, we move them to the side in front of the curtain, and then we can have your group pictures and individual pictures also over there. So uh, we can kind of just move things uh, in a hopefully in a. A good flow this evening. Okay, so once again, thank you guys, and uh, we'll go with our um, acknowledgement of athletes, and we'll begin uh, tonight with uh, Coach Joe Means. Okay. Going with that. 
Hunter was supposed to be here tonight, but Zion's having a neuro sports banquet, and he's watching his little sister get whatever she's getting out there, and said he wouldn't, he told me he didn't know if he'd make it or not, so. Uh, girls, Jesse Sanchez. Kenley Soap. <laughs> and this one asked me to say something about her being pretty. So I'm going to say that. Very pretty. Uh, Plaza Bishop. Not that the rest of you aren't. <laughs> Faith Catcher. Kyla Howard. Kay Ramirez. Zoe Geist. <laughs> Natalie Bacious. <laughs> Rachel Crowley. <laughs> Mackenzie Teehee. I guess that's it, except for DJ. She thought I was going to leave her out. <laughs> These kids uh, worked hard. They, uh, out of all of them, Hunter Hampton was uh, a state qualifier, individual state qualifier. The girls qualified for state as a team. And uh, the state championship school, secondary school activity sends these awards out to us, and I'm gonna hand them out now. Uh, to the very pretty in the red outfit, Elijah <laughs> Bishop. <laughs> Michael's not here. Faith Catcher. Jesse Sanchez. <laughs> Kenny Soap. <laughs> Dave Ramirez. <laughs> Megan Hughes. <laughs> and Hunter again. All right. say uh, this is one of the hardest working groups I've ever coached. Uh, they tend to have a little more fun in what they do it's because you can't take yourself too serious when you're running down the road dodging cars and everything else, dogs, cars, anything else that happens to get out of the way. But i uh, been very blessed with the talent and stuff that you guys have produced. And I just want to say thank you, parents, 
and looking forward to next year because we got a good strong whole group to build off of right here. All right, uh, everybody, you can sit down except for closet. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I have two seniors this year, Hunter Hampton and Plaza Bishop. And I couldn't have asked, begged, or bought better leadership than what I had for these two guys, okay? I uh, wish Hunter was here, because I wanted to say it in front of him. But she is, so she gets to deal with it. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll okay. you. Thank you, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Mean. Uh, next, uh, we'll recognize our football athletes, uh, Coach Michael Perez. All right, for the football awards right now, I'm up here instead of Coach Cobble. As you know, Coach Cobble took the head job in Duncan, and we wish him the best. And the awards we're fixing to hand out were uh, decided upon while he was still here at the very end of turning in equipment and uh, just want to say thank you to the seniors and their incredibly hard work for this season. It's the best season that's uh, happened here in quite some time. Uh, these young men are very deserving of what they've accomplished and we just want to thank the coaches for all of their work, time away from their families and everything they've put in to help make this possible. Uh, we want to give a round of applause for them. To start off, a lot of our awards this year, because it was such a special year, a lot of these awards are code up. So for the MVP, we'll start with that one. Uh, these two individuals, one of them stepped up in several spots and several positions to fill in when somebody was hurt, made a lot of big plays. Uh, and the other individual, I think every turnover we had uh, went through him somehow. He was one of the most dependable kids that, uh, that we had on the team. These two individuals are Billy McNagg and Drake Barbie. Next, we have the Offensive Player of the Year. Obviously, we had uh, lots of records set and broken this year. Our, uh, our first one is obviously the guy that distributed the ball to everybody, Jordan Wiggins, and then Keaton Adams. <laughs> Lyman Award. Uh, all these things wouldn't be possible without the guys up front. They worked extremely hard. Uh, one of them went both ways. The other one set the set the edge for us on offense. And these are Tommy Anderson and Hunter Kirkland. Somebody who was uh, new to the team, obviously, a sophomore freshman, and came out and did an outstanding job for us. This individual not only helped us uh, beat Salisaw in an amazing way, but also spot play for when we had several injuries. That is Jeremiah Noisewater. Started out as one of the starters in, uh, on defense and then 
did what was best for the team and sort of took a back seat. And then towards the end of the season, not only did he have to play several positions, but he did it without question and uh, played his heart out. And that's KJ Ross. Like I said, we'd like to thank all these individuals for their heart and their effort and what a great season that they've had. And we hope to build on that this next year and keep building on that in years to come. Never mind, hold on. <laughs> I figured this would be one I would remember. Defensive Player of the Year. My bad. Uh, this goes to two individuals that, that stood out uh, tremendously. At the end of the year, they were tied for most tackles and Tulsa Rogers really just couldn't get to the next level, so uh, we kind of coded up. One of them had one more than the other one, but that is uh, Kevin Chugalay and Kyron Sullivan.
Thank you, uh, Coach Parker. Uh, next up is wrestling, uh, Coach Chris Barbie. <laughs> Uh, most of you know my son Drake was involved in a horrific car accident during wrestling season. I just wanted to start tonight off by thanking everyone who kept Drake and I in their thoughts and prayers this past season. It's been the most dis difficult year of my life uh, and I think it is important to express my gratitude to everyone who came to visit, saved cars, most of all prayed for Drake's speedy recovery. Uh, I've been the head wrestling coach here at Stillwell for the past six years. It's been my privilege to coach many regional and state placers as well as the four-time state champion and mentor and coach great young groups of young men. Uh, but my son's accident made it very difficult to be 100% this year. So I'd like to take this time to say a huge thank you to Coach Mayfield, his wife, Melissa, for the sacrifices they made in the year of picking up the slack in my absence. Now we're on to our awards. We're giving out a Hustle Award, and this award goes to Sean Graham. <laughs> and we uh, next we'll go on to our uh, Most Improved Wrestler Award, and that goes to Kane Catron. The, uh, we're giving out a leadership award. He wasn't able to, to be with us on the mat this year at the end, but he, uh, he led through many more examples, and uh, that's Drake Barbie. like again uh, just to thank everybody for uh, helping out this year and all the thoughts and prayers and uh, thank you very much. Thank you Coach Barbie. Uh, next up we have our girls basketball coach Glenn Cone. Sometimes I look out there and I think we had more uh, fans than the home team did when we traveled on the road. And, you know, our kids appreciated that uh, support that we got from everyone. Uh, I also, I, I would like to thank the parents for letting their kids, their girls play for me, you know, and all that they have done this year. Uh, I thank those mothers that uh, have gave us those, uh, prepared those post-game meal, you know, that was, we appreciated that. Uh, thank uh, Coach Crittenden for his help this year. Uh, Coach Decker for all that she's done. You know, I couldn't have made it without him. They were always uh, uh, there to help with anything that I asked them to do. Uh, you know, to say a little bit about our team this season, you know, we, uh, these girls are really hard work. Know, they wanted to be good at everything they done. You know, they seemed like they tried to do anything that I asked them to do. You know, Coach uh, Trenton and Coach Decker came one day and said, "Those girls are really trying, and they're doing want to do what you want to do." And they asked, they said that 
when you get that marker board out, that uh, marker, and you start drawing those lines and putting those X's and those, they say they don't know what in the world you're talking about. <laughs> you know, they did try to do, you know, that was always trying to do what I asked them to do. You know, we had a good season. I, I felt like our kids, you know, we won the Hilldale tournament and, you know, beat any rolling in that. that is, so it really uh, kind of got us going, and that was a big win for us. You know, we come back after Christmas and won the consolation and you know, we played in the Fort Gibson tournament where, you know, it's probably the toughest tournament there it is in the Oklahoma and girls basketball. And, you know, we competed and you know, we lost a close game to a top ranked team uh, to Broken Bow. And it seemed like, you know, I've seen some disappointment in the dressing room and it felt like, you know, our kids kind of, come back out after that and you know decided that they were not going to be they were not going to lose anymore and you know, that kind of was a turning point for us in the season and, you know, after that we uh, went on an eight game winning streak and, you know, we beat number the number three team Moldro and, uh, and we went on and were runner up in the NOA conference and won our district and uh, we played Fort Gibson to end up being the state champion and we played them to a, you know, to a very close game. It could have went either way at the end. And you know, I, I like to say that I do appreciate these girls and the hard work that they put in. And, you know, they are a great group of girls. I felt fortunate to be able to coach them the the seniors, you know, I'm gonna miss them. Uh, I have a Later, the varsity letter for all of the team if they want to come up and get that while we expect to hear them out. Uh, had a freshman that played a lot for me. She got to come in at, after Christmas. Uh, had a started off real well. We kind of threw her out there early in the season. We had some injuries and sickness on our team. I think we started her one game against the. Uh, one or two ranked team in the state in 6A, and she led our team in scoring. And uh, so I'm looking forward to getting her back. Uh, Kenley Stoke. <laughs> uh, I have some sophomores that came out of our car for me each and every day. And uh, so, uh, looking forward to see what they can do for us in the years to come. Uh, Katie Stevenson. <laughs> Jason Sanchez. <laughs> I, I had some juniors on our team that you know really contributed and uh, filled in where we needed them to. And, We'll be called upon to lead our team next year. Uh, looking for big things to come from them. Uh, Sydney Chaplin. <laughs> Oda Hillary. <laughs> this next girl, she was our second leading scorer and kind of a three-point specialist. Caitlin Livers. <laughs> Javen Gann. <laughs> Another junior that we had that played a lot for us. He played our team in rebounding and also led our team in charges taken. I think we, Coach Crickman still owes her probably a week of sonic lunches for taking those charges that had paid us yet. <laughs> Julia Brunner.
I had five seniors on the team this year. And like I said, I appreciated them very much. Uh, they were the leaders of our team, and you know, our team pretty much went uh, at how they played. And you know, we all, everyone on our team looked to them. You know, I heard going to the coaches' meetings and going to the scrimmages, and you know, I heard a lot of good things about our senior girls before I ever uh, we ever played our first game. So they had a pretty good reputation of being good basketball players before I ever uh, got to take over and coach them. Uh, our seniors this year were Robin Grimmett.
last but not least, uh, we had to get a bigger plaque to put all of our accomplishments on this plaque. Four years later, we're here at Stillwell. 1,000 point club, three time current dream team, uh, you know, AA All Conference and Conference Most Valuable Player. All tournaments in 2015. Fort Gibson, the KSA MVP in 2015, 2017 Bays All Tournament Team, 2018 All Tournament Team at Bays. This year she was the Oklahoma Girls Basketball Coaches Associate, All State, Oklahoma Coaches Associate. Excuse me, Oklahoma Coaches Association, All State. She was OSAA All Star by class and Native American All State. The Oklahoma Coaches Association. That's you no. Know, that's a. It's an honor to receive all of those awards. Apparently, but the Coaches Association. You know, it only there's. And girls out of the eastern side of the state, class 4A, 5A, and 6A, and it's quite an honor to uh, make that. And, uh, you know, probably one of the best players that I ever had a chance to coach. And, uh, you know, a great kid. She signed, got to be a part of her signing her letter of intent with Southern Nazarene today. And, you know, we're going to miss all of these girls, but uh, this award goes to JC Simpson. have our freshmen uh, stand up if you're here. Um, I don't know how many of here. Coach is trying to look at them and see if any of our freshmen are here tonight. If they're not, that's fine. Uh, we're going to go by and tell them they had a great season this past year. They went 18-1. Uh, they won the Sun Long Springs Tournament. Uh, did a very good job of, of learning what we're trying to do, um, our concepts, our, our, our way of playing basketball. and. Uh, you know, we have that one that they, we talked about all year long, that one will come back upon us, and we didn't get a redemption on that one, and we really wanted it, so uh, we never got it. And it was at yes, Sequoia over at Sequoia, and just, that one just hurt us a little bit this year. So, uh, But great season, uh, a lot to build from right there. They're going to be uh, the future of our program, and uh, from here on out, it's uh, they've been working hard in the gym right now. They're getting, they're getting ready to go for summer camps, and they're they're really buying into everything we're doing. So uh, you know, just keep your eye out for these guys coming up because they're they're fun to watch. They got size, speed, shooters, guards, defenders, athletes. <coughs> they have something that burns inside of. I think every athlete in here it should be some competitive desire to win and find a way to win, and they, they have that, okay? They come down, and then they come back, and they just find a way, okay? But uh, just keep your eyes out for these guys coming up, all right? Next, I'd like to have our varsity guys just come on up here, and uh, we'll see how you do. Just come up here and make a line up here. Come on, Tyson, Trent, Bat. I see all of them. That's a kid. This is approximately, um, I don't know, we're missing a couple. Um, 
We talked about these guys. They had a very good season this past year. Uh, 22 and 6 is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, we got some redemption against a couple of teams. Um, uh, we had, uh, we got victory. last year victory just beat us by whatever score they wanted to. It was 30 some odd points and it wasn't even fun, all right? And they, I guess they got tired of hearing me gripe about it and we got the redemption in the last game we got against them and uh, we pulled the upset and that's, that's what we're trying to do is progress every single time. Um, this group over here is a group of juniors. Uh, we're missing a sophomore here. He's six five, and he's the of our big Mexican. He's out there playing hard, and he just gets after it, you know, and he's got a soft touch around the rim. We're going to use him more next year, and he just gets after it. He's fun to be around. He's a good kid. I wish he was here tonight. I mean, he's, he brightens up the room, okay? We're missing Keith Nashville, and and Bo, um, the seven juniors, I, I don't want to call them out individually because they're a group. They, they don't care about who scores. They don't care about who, they just want to win. It doesn't matter about this, it's, it's them as a team. They wear, they play for what's across their chest. And that's, that's it, okay? Um, in our practices, they would get it, we'd mix them up and they just play hard and get after each other and uh, one of the, Final points I saw was uh, I think Matt dove for a ball. Tyson sees him dive, throwing off the teens, by the way, and Tyson walks over and kind of kicks Matt while he's down, <laughs> pushing down even more because he ain't going to let him up because they're going to go score. So that's the competitive fire that these guys had over here. That it didn't matter <laughs> who it was, they're going to try to win, not whoever was on their team. So uh, I, I think. In the future next year, everybody thinks we're going to lose these guys over here, but we're going to be just fine, okay? Um, we're going to rely on some size that we need, but speed is what we're going to have a lot more next year, and they're going to get after it. Ball handlers and everything else. Now our seniors. This is a, a soft spot for me. Every single year, I remember telling the coach when he first started that one of the hardest things to do is going to be to say goodbye after spending so much time with these guys. You, you form a bond. And then you gotta say goodbye. That's it. Okay, so uh, but each of these guys I can go off and talk about each other for you know 30 minutes and it just it'd be a grand old time, all right? But first up, we gotta give uh, some awards out, so we're gonna do that. Um, each five of these guys, Jacob's not here tonight, but each five of them make all conference um, first team as voted by the coaches in the conference. They uh, I just kind of sit back and let these guys speak up, and they just kind of pick all the guys out, and they, they threw them their names out there, and everybody voted, and they picked them all. So first up is going to be Jordan Williams. <laughs> Jordan was as about as clutch as we had. We, we were playing Dakota, and he hit a, a shot that I don't know how many to this day. He hit front of the rim, and I somehow hit the bottom of the front of the rim and it hit and it rolled over somehow and it bounced in and we win a game and you know everybody dreams of that you always think you're a little kid three two one you shoot the ball and we've all done it and he actually had it come true for him and he huge 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 shot for us and you know we didn't play our best game but we found a way to win and that's what the objective is sometimes is sometimes the shots weren't going in sometimes they're making everything they throw up but you got to find a way to win they did, okay, and Jordan was a huge part of that. Next up is going to be Jerry, Jerry Stevenson. Um, I got a call from a coach that watched us, watched us play in the area, and they were, they were asking me about Jerry, and I said, how, how did he go up and knock that ball? I said, you haven't seen us play then. If you haven't seen us play, Jerry, you don't look very tall, but and he'll go try to dunk on Logan if he has to. Um, but <laughs> there was a dunk in practice one day, and I wasn't there, that I hear about, and it happened. So it just happened. <laughs> um, but Jerry is probably one of the the. If you if you come in here and you just put your heart into it, you work hard. Um, that, that's 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 him. He come in. He was our most consistent player. You can count on him every single night to go in there and battle. He he played undersized in the paint, and it didn't matter who it was. He was going to 
body up, play defense, get after you, okay? And, uh, and he, he just played hard. And the growth from freshman to where he's at right now, I can't, I can't even measure it because it was so, such a big jump. I always talk about the jump from uh, sophomore to junior year. Well, he made a big jump from freshman to sophomore, from sophomore to junior, then junior to senior. It was just huge. Every single year, he kept getting better. And uh, we're gonna miss his, 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 I don't know, soft-spoken style, but monster self in the paint. You know, it's that's just how he played. But uh, and Jerry Stevenson. Scott Eubanks, he was our leading scorer as a sophomore. Um, he's been averaging double figures throughout the time. Uh, he's been our point guard, uh, kind of our uh, look to score guy and penetrate, kick, and uh, just do what we have to do. And he, uh, I'm gonna miss him a lot because he he knew every nuance of what we did. Uh, in the summertime, we. Call and I said, all right, you just call the defense what we're going to run, and I'll just sit over there and make sure we're doing it right. And he would, he would call everything, and we'd just be just fine every time they're on the floor. And, uh, being with these guys for four years, they were in the gym with me for four years, um, and that was, I mean, I can't ask for any more than that. Uh, Scott's about as solid as a guard there was. Um, uh, with what he's done this year uh, and throughout the years, he also got um, MVP of our conference also. Um, and uh, it is as voted on by uh, our coaches in our conference. And uh, I'm very appreciative of him coming here and working his butt off and, uh, you know, and, and getting this accomplished. So he was uh, And then we'll have Logan. Logan Maddox. <laughs> He, he shot 40% from the three-point line. He led us in scoring the last two years. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of the time you'll remember him going up and getting it done, usually from a pass from from a Scott or a, you know just flying around getting a, a put back on off the rebound. And I mean that, that's that's always energizing for the team. Um, but he also uh, he's a little bit faster than he looks. Um, and he would get a steal here and there, and, and, and he read everything in the bag. So, I mean, he, he just did a whole lot of things for us, rebounding-wise. Um, but he also earned conference MVP also. There were uh, there was actually three conference MVPs, one from uh, Molgo, and these two guys got it. So it was like a try. So we had uh, two conference MVPs this year, and uh, they couldn't distinguish them both away from each other. Uh, two different coaches, both nominated them both to be the MVP, and I really didn't have no say. They just kind of picked them both out, and they, everybody voted on it. And I kind of stayed away because I wasn't going to vote for one and not the other. I thought they both deserved it, so uh, they both got that honor, and it was awesome. Okay, and I'm, I'm so proud and honored that they chose somebody from Steelwell, two young men, uh, to do that. And, uh, it was a very, very good job. This is our team. Um, you know, we. Come up short this year by one, um, but I also saw the, the emotion, the heart, and the character they played with. Uh, they found ways to win when we were behind. They found ways to come back into a game when we were behind. Uh, they kept battling. They never gave up uh, to the very end. And uh, I'm, I'm so I'm so thankful that I got this opportunity to coach these young men. Um, I do want to thank the administration, the school board, for giving this opportunity uh, to mentor these young men and hope that I can guide them in the right direction uh, for their you know, future endeavors, whatever they decide to do, uh, that they always have a home here here at Steelwell. And uh, you know, let's look forward to the future of these young men and what they do after this. And let's look to the future of these guys coming back next year and uh, come out and cheer them on. Uh, they're going to be fun to watch. They're fun to get after each other, okay? And uh, watch each other keep each other down, all right? Thank you. Have a great night. Next up is uh, 
will be our cheerleaders. Uh, Miss Gina Kirk is the uh, is the coach. Um, she is struggling with uh, talking tonight, uh, strep. So she asked me to speak for her. So she gave me a a list or a letter to say. And see, oh, can we jump? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. This year has been so awesome and has, has been by so quick. I want to give a shout out to all of our Stillwell High School athletes for all their hard work. We are very proud of you all and also the parents for your support. Right now, I would like to call up the 2017 2018 ATM cheerleaders. Come on up, cheerleaders. started with a team of uh, 15 cheerleaders and ended up with a cheer with our cheer season was only 11. The girls have worked really hard to get as close to perfect as possible. All their hard work has paid off. Last summer before school started I took the cheerleaders to the cheer camp at Oklahoma University and they were all we all learned new things. The girls did real good there. Three of our girls were chosen as candidates for all American cheer. DJ and Drayson. Cheerleaders proudly supported all of the sports of Stillwell High School. They worked hard for football and basketball, then hung out with friends to support all other all of the other sports. This year, I have the best leadership award goes to Anna Blair. <laughs> Most dedicated cheerleader, Erica Vanderheiden. Most improved cheerleader, Taylor Fischenhoff. <laughs> Most spirited cheerleader, Audra Gregory. <laughs> Outstanding freshman cheerleader, Noelle Simmons. <laughs> And our best smile award, Aaron Anderson. I want to thank my colleagues for their support throughout the year. And we have medals for the star performers, which is goes to the whole cheerleading team. What else? <laughs> All right, next up we have a powerlifting coach slash AD, Ron Bill I'm going to speak on behalf of the powerlifting program. Um, kind of give you just a background of how that works. Um, Powerlifting is governed by the Oklahoma Football Coaches Association. So most of the time what you see at the powerlifting meets are mainly your football players, but it really is open to anybody that wants to come in and compete. Um, this year we competed in four events. Uh, there's not a whole lot of events in the state, and it's kind of split up east and west. So, you know, we kind of stay on the east side of the state. Uh, we competed at Hilldale and at Shakota. Then regionals rolled around at which Cleveland, and then those that were fortunate enough to place at regionals got to uh, live at the state fire lifting meet in El Reno. Don't know how many of them are here today. Um, I wasn't in charge of the powerlifting, but some of the names that were given to me. So if you're here, go ahead and come on up. Mike Grigsby. 
Blake Longshore, Tyler Smith, Chase Butner, Gabe Sweet, Damian Biggs, Ashton Workman, Josh Foster, Scotty Tice, Rosendo Reyes, Tommy Anderson, and Kyle Holland. have a lot more that, that participates in our powerlifting program for whatever reason. Sometimes they weren't able to make it to the meets. Um, a lot of things could have happened. But I know those students that I've mentioned did at least compete in one of the events. Um, we're looking forward to getting the quantity up a little bit on, on our powerlifting uh, team so we can go and make a serious and legitimate attempt to to come out as a team and play some of the regionals as a team and give us a shot to, to win the state title as a team. So um, we're going to encourage as many kids as we can to come out, uh, get involved in our powerlifting program, and make it stronger and again allow us to compete as a team. Um, one person I want to, to acknowledge that's up here right now, and I think you'll have a, an award a little bit later on, is Mr. Kyle Holland. Uh, the little guy up here on the end in black. Um, man, it, it, it's quite a it's quite a sight to see him um, throwing that weight around. He plays first at Shakota, he plays first at Hilldale, and he plays first at regional in the large school division. And the large school division consists of three A, four A, five A, and six A. So it's quite an accomplishment. Um, just kind of give you an idea of the kind of weight that he throws around. Um, the meets consist of three events. You've got the squat, you've got the bench, and you've got the deadlift. <coughs> On his squat at state, he squatted 600. Bench 315. And deadlifted 640. video of it which is pretty amazing to see but uh, uh, we're not set up to watch that video but anyway that's a total combined weight of 1,555 pounds and it wasn't even close between first and second place uh, second place was 135 pounds behind it so like I said it, it was no contest um, with this performance at state he was crowned the state champion the large school division again that's uh, divisions 3A, 4A, 5A, and 6A. So uh, give them all a round of applause. All right, thank you, Mr. Jordan. If you guys are looking for a bodyguard, there's your man right here. All right, next up is our girls of golf, uh, Coach Shannon Terman. I'm going to go ahead and do boys and girls golf. So if you are a boys golfer or a girls golfer, if you would come on up here to be recognized at this time, that would be great. <laughs> I'm debating whether to tell you how golf is different from all other sports, and it happens in several different ways, but probably, as I was, as I was, I was thinking about all of the different sports that we travel to, Throughout the year, we see lots of different fan support, and golf's a little bit different in the sense that none of you come, okay? Part of that is because you have to be up before daylight, and so I don't blame you, um, but we get to, uh, we get to, when we drive across 10 Killer, we see the steam coming off the water, so to speak, and it is uh, very early mornings. In fact, most of the people on the course when we get there are not fans, they're angry at us, because they are the retired people who live there who don't get to play because we're having a tournament that day, okay? So things are a little bit different in the sport of golf. However, these kids have shown a tremendous amount of commitment through the year, and and I, I want to uh, 
to thank them for their time and that dedication because it's hard to, it's hard to get all of your homework done and to still get up before daylight and be out there and, and go to work and then play all day long and um, and they just they just deserve um, some appreciation. So I have uh, the list of the boys players because <coughs> Coach Goodenough was not able to be here tonight. And that was Gavin Pritchett, Easton Ladder, Blake Harris, Ben Johnson, Chase Buckner, who is here, and uh, John Thompson. They did a fantastic job representing us at regionals. Um, shot a very good score, especially considering it's a very young boys team, and we're looking for great things for them next year, and hopefully to make a, uh, a state appearance as a team. So that's going to be great. Please give the boys a round of applause. <laughs> we have had a couple of awards. We only had, and boys and girls both, we only had two seniors this year. And so our teams are young and growing. Um, one of our seniors happened to be a manager, and she is not here tonight. But I still wanted to uh, give her the recognition for this. So um, show her a would you hold this for her? It was Kayla Grimes, okay? Um, shows up, goes to tournaments. I tell you what, if you want to get a kid motivated to wake up early, offer them the chance to ride in a golf cart, okay? <laughs> it will get them going and and motivate them to be a good helper. Um, Kayla has served us for the last basically three years helping with water, drinks, um, and just providing the things that our players need as they travel, of course. Um, and our golfer of the year this year for the ladies is Miss Karen Diver. We're going to miss her. She was our golf queen. She has done a fantastic job of playing and persevering uh, through injury, um, being able, going through the rain and the mud and the mug, the heat, the cold. She's seen it all, and it just, it, I, I had to pay her a dollar to get her to smile, okay? <laughs> That's the hardest part, and, I, and I'm sorry because I know she's really embarrassed right now, but it's going to be fantastic. Please recognize Miss Karen. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Booster Club, uh, the board, administration, uh, faculty, and staff, and uh, most of all the parents. Uh, that you guys and all the sacrifices you guys do, uh, a lot of this wouldn't happen. Uh, first off, I'm going to have the, uh, the girls soccer team come up, please. These girls, uh, great season. Um, had a beefy uh, non-conference or non-district schedule. Uh, it was great, but the uh, thing was, is uh, through those times, uh, those first uh, well, four games, five games, uh, the craziest thing was to see more people in crushes as there was on the field playing, and that was that that hurt because we had a bunch of uh, great athletes on the bench. But the good thing was that we got them all healthy and all uh, rehabbed 100% pretty much. Um, when it meant the most, that was district play. Uh, did real well district play, and this, the last game, uh, we had no control over it. It was just Ebner and Poto, and the wrong team won. So it uh, kind of put us out of the playoffs. But uh, all in all, we had a great season. Uh, first off, I want to give these guys and these ladies uh, a varsity letter. So I heard your name off. I want to give your uh, varsity letter. Uh, Julie Brenner, Jules. Chloe Brown. Katie Chadwick. Jordan Collins. Maddie College. My 
Life on Pike Eason. <laughs> Jenny Eubanks. <laughs> Carly Freeman. <laughs> Alexa Houston. <laughs> Cynthia Gatewood. <laughs> Paige Hardbarger. Tim Rodmarker. <laughs> Lauren Isaacs. <laughs> Casey Gimble. <laughs> Kate and Kate. <laughs> Rosalia Ledger Laro. <laughs> Kaylee Muskrat. Smith, Reggie Smith, <laughs> uh, next up the uh, the awards. Um, the all these awards uh, this year, uh, like always, are voted on by their teammates. Uh, this year we had a different award uh, winner of every uh, award given. I thought it was great because that it goes to show you how many girls are are committed. Uh, to the team and all the hard work they put out uh, day in and day out. Uh, so uh, we'll start off with the uh, most valuable player this year. Uh, four year starter, four year letterman, uh, does about everything. Uh, leads by example, by her play and practice uh, on the field of games. Uh, her, her leadership, just, I mean, unbelievable leadership um, all four years, even as a freshman. Uh, most valuable player this year, Timber Hardwater. Uh, next award. Uh, this is the only award uh, you just win outright. That's because you, you just go out there and you just win it. Uh, had 17 goals on the season. Uh, unbelievable season. Uh, just just finished well this season. Uh, every time we need the most, she comes. She come through, and I mean, she, she got us a goal. Uh, just her, her, her contact and just the way she shoots the ball is unbelievable. Uh, and we've got one more year uh, with her. Uh, Leading goal scorer for the 2018 season, Maddie College. Uh, next off, uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, started all 12 games this season. Uh, actually started last year, then it come on uh, you know, with injury and showed up. The freshman and played really, really well for us. And this year as a sophomore, uh, just stepped up and just solidified her spot as a center back this year. Uh, this year's defensive player of the year, Kelly Muskrat. <laughs> offensive player of the year. Uh, offense, it's, it's generated by, by I mean, I mean, just a lot of different players, you know, from the, you know, from the back, uh, even starting the keeper, I mean, can generate some offense. But usually it starts in the midfield and then works its way up to the forwards uh, positions to where, you know, we, we really feel this year. Uh, scoring, I believe, 34, 35 goals in the season. Uh, this year, won a lot of balls, did a lot of dirty work in the midfield uh, to generate a lot of offense. Uh, this year's offensive player of the year, Katie Chadwick. <laughs> this year's hustle award uh, goes to a person, you know, to a lady that uh, never said I have an attitude. I mean, the ball can be not only going out, and she will give it 110%. You know, five yards out of bounds just to, just to give her team a chance uh, to keep possession of the ball. Uh, wins every 50 50 ball in the middle, uh, offensive side, defensive side, played everywhere this year. Uh, just, you know, had a motor that wouldn't stop. Uh, this year's uh, Hustle Award goes to Regan Smith. Uh, this year is a new award that uh, we, me and Coach Doherty, thought we should give out because it was uh, well deserved. Uh, her first year playing, uh, you know, for the high school uh, as a freshman, um, started out, you know, like any, like any freshman, uh, learning to touch the ball, learning, you know, getting her IQ of the game uh, a little better throughout every game. And throughout the last probably two weeks of the season, you could really, really see a difference in the way she played. Her touch, uh, her IQ of the game, which was incredible, it was becoming incredible. 
uh, picked it up really, really quick. Uh, but man, we thought you know, this, this award was really deserving, and we thought we need to give this award this year. Uh, most important player this year, Paige Hardbarger. <laughs> And last but not least, it's another award uh, we decided to give out. Um, newcomer this year, um, and showed up in a, in a very big, huge, and a positive way for our team. Uh, she was she was well needed. Uh, didn't need to play at all uh, this year, uh, but was there at every practice. Uh, put out 110 uh, percent physically, uh, mentally, and uh, led the team as best as she could. You know, not being able to play. Uh, spoke uh, of the team in a very positive uh, manner uh, all the time. Uh, was there to give us a lift in every game, uh, in every practice. Uh, when girls were down, she picked them up. Uh, just, just a great, great all-around person. Uh, this year's uh, Indian Pride Award goes to Sydney Portfield. <laughs> couple other things. Um, we had a couple uh, one lady uh, this year get a, uh, I guess, get nominated for uh, Allstate, and she ended up uh, getting Allstate. I don't want to mention, uh, was this year's uh, MVP as well, Timber Harbarger. <laughs> and this year, uh, in District 4A6, uh, she made the All-District team as our goalkeeper, uh, you know, can't say enough about Jules. I mean, you go on and on about her. Uh, this year's our uh, our all-state district team member is Jules Brunner. Go <laughs> miss you guys, uh, you seniors. Go miss every one of you guys. I think this is my uh, my second class of freshmen. I've seen all the way from start to finish. I said I'm gonna miss every one of them, but uh, next year we got a really really good solid core to uh, to to build a team around next year. Uh, anyway, this is your 2018 Still Lady in the Soccer Team. Would all the, uh, the boys soccer team come up, please? First off, uh, we have one heck of a season. Uh, these guys stuck it out to the very end. Uh, started out rough because we got to play maybe uh, 80 minutes the whole preseason, and that ain't much. So we had to hit the ground running uh, and not a district play. Uh, with you know, just 80 minutes of soccer in play. Uh, uh, for the last boys and girls, uh, the game with Kesha Hall and Ms. Doe got rained out. Uh, girls got good, pretty good weather and top of tournament, and the boys uh, ended up getting a tsunami put on uh, early in the morning. And then the weather broke for a little while, we had to play 80 minutes of soccer that day, and that was all the preseason soccer we got. Uh, Decatur got rained out, so it was, it was tough uh, staying idle for for quite some time, you know, a week, week and a half at a time, so it's, it's tough to stay motivated, uh, but, you know, definitely not stay motivated. These guys will prove myself motivated. Uh, had a great season. Uh, went 9-4 uh, on the season. Had the uh, had a home playoff game this year uh, against Tulsa McLean. Fell a little bit short. Uh, just, just things just didn't go our way. Uh, but, you know, this, this, this team, I just can't stand up with these guys. Uh, come out every day, you know, working hard, um, putting in, uh, you know, tons of time, uh, just like the girls. I mean, you know, girls get up at 6.30 in the morning, and stay till 8.30, and these guys start at 2.30, and then at 4.30, so it's not a Some guys sit around later just to get touches on the ball, you know, that's just all around. Um, anyways, uh, great season with these guys. I'm going to miss all the seniors. I mean, it's just, I know, it's one of those magical seasons you don't want to forget. Uh, which we can still be playing out about now, but uh, <coughs> it is what it is, guys.
<laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, we'll give out varsity letters to the guys that are here. Uh, Gandhi Flores. Not out here. Samuel Baird. Butcher. Chase Bean. Who's gone, Barry? Jared Bruner. Kenny Baker. Josh Foster. Felix Gray. Melissa Gray. Gonzalez, McKinley Hernandez, Patrick Gilly, <laughs> Ivan McFadden, <coughs> Tomas McCoy, George McCush. <coughs> Mount Schuster. Nope. Who's that most solely? Yeah. Bruce. Frank Mason. Nope. KJ Ross. Tyler Dome. And Jorge Batista. Okay, those we uh, those are the uh, the varsity letters. Uh, now to the awards. Uh, these awards, uh, like any other year, were voted on by their teammates. I uh, had to go up a lot of awards this year because they came out with a tie. Uh, I looked that way because I didn't want to be the one to break it because both uh, boys were both deserving of this award or these awards. Uh, start off with, uh, actually this is a new, new award, uh, as I think it was we gave out to the, uh, the girls. Uh, this award is the most true player award. Uh, this guy has, uh, he is a freshman. Uh, started a couple games as a freshman, started half the time as a sophomore, uh, started uh, all, every game this year and played almost all eight in this year. Uh, this guy's touch has become incredible uh, over the last three years. Uh, it's good he spent a lot, of, a lot of work in practice, uh, a lot of time on, on his own, just to get to where he's touch. His IQ of the game was a lot better. Uh, so this uh, most important group player award was Josh Foster. <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, this guy saved us on many, many, many occasions, and is only a freshman, so we still got three great years ahead. Uh, this guy was incredible. Uh, stepped up, uh, made the switch. Actually, he was outside mid to begin with the season, and when we uh, had uh, one of our starting outside backs go down uh, with an ankle injury uh, in the top of Herman, uh, he stepped up, and uh, it was a good move. Uh, uh, for the team this year's defense player of the year, Tank Cater. <laughs> this year's Hustle Award uh, was when we had a co op, and this is uh, well deserved by both players. Uh, actually, it's one of those awards that these guys have had and never said I had to. Uh, no one when the balls don't go out. Uh, they had no chance at it, but they still make a play of it. Went 50 50 balls uh, anywhere on the field. Uh, but this one we had to cope this year because they didn't have time. Uh, one of the Hustle Awards goes to Kane Cater. <laughs> and the other is Jimmy Green. Jimmy. Uh, and as, as, as Kane, Kane saved a lot of the goals in the back, and Jimmy created a lot of goals and opportunities for us in the front just by just uh, wreaking havoc in the uh, the back line of the opposing team is crazy. And that's actually how he got the uh, one of the goals in the playoff game this year, which is just hustle. I mean, i never seen a guy fight through the air and do what he did to get the goal, but I said it was hard. And it was hard, you know, you know, by him and just everybody. I mean, can't say much or can't say enough of these guys. Uh, this year, uh, leading scorer had uh, 24 goals in the season. Had uh, Seven versus Westfield, had five versus Toka. Uh, he had, I don't even know how many hat tricks in these games. I think he scored in every game uh, that our team scored in, I think, by Hugo. 
and uh, it was the bottom part of our two goals in that, in that game too. Uh, 24 goals on the season is unbelievable. Uh, something I never, you know, it was, it was just um, awesome to see, awesome to watch. Uh, this year's even scored, Ken Kimball. Uh, this year's Offensive Player of the Year, uh, Goes the same guy, 24 goals. I mean, just generated a lot of offense. Uh, I say he's, he's fun to watch. Uh, I said uh, <laughs> you can't stand up with this guy. Can't get him. I'm just glad All right, and the uh, the last two, uh, the most valuable player. Uh, this is another one we had to co up this year because they tied. Uh, and I say as well deserved to both players. These, these two guys were kind of the glue uh, of the other team. Uh, they were two of the four captains that we had. Um, and these guys were captains, uh, you know, even in their freshman year, they just, uh, you know, kind of more of a, uh, a lead by example kind of, kind of players. And then as they grew older, their voice became a little bit bigger and a little stronger. And then it, like I said, it showed us that, you know, more as a sophomore, really as a junior. And then their, their senior year is just incredible, uh, the leadership skills and you know, it's what they meant to the team. Uh, but these, this year's uh, MVPs goes to uh, Ken Kimball and Felix Gray. Uh, this year also, um, you know, the guys a few weeks ago wanted to uh, start a new tradition um, you know, for these, you know, for the younger guys. One, they want to pass it the down, it's pretty much what they want to do. Uh, and they asked me about it, and I said I thought it was a pretty cool idea, and let's do it. Uh, what this is, is uh, these are four of my captains, and they are passing their uh, captain's arm lines down to the uh, prospective captains of next year. So guys, if you'd like, go ahead and, and pass them down. Players, our older players, two are our, our younger players, and you know, players are going to be here next year. Uh, I said they're prospective captains for next year, and the ones that they, they thought I totally agree with, uh, I think they could be very, very good captains next year, uh, both uh, on the field, off the field, uh, by the way they play in practice, and the, the way they plan the games, and of course, you know, their leadership, uh, and you know, how you know, other, other teammates look up to them. Uh, anyways, 2018 boys soccer team. Right, thank you, Coach. Again, uh, when you hear of still soccer uh, spring, summer, or fall. Uh, for recreation or competitive soccer, this uh, lady comes to mind, and she's going to give out the Stillwell Soccer Matt Train Leadership Award. Annette Gordy, come on up. Leadership Award goes this year to Timber Hardbarger. Timber, Matt was a great friend and a leader to his team. A leader is a servant and Matt was that. He encouraged his teammates and most of all, Matt gave all his self and played with his whole heart to come better than he was the day, the day before. We see all those qualities in you. I think this quote best describes you. Leading is about striving to become better than we were or, and helping everything and everyone around us to become better too.
All right, next up is uh, track coach Michael Gray. Track. We love track. Woo I want to thank both of these coaches, Coach Davis and Coach Sell, for uh, making the track experience this year a very fun one. Uh, that was an unexpected thing that I was doing this year until about a month in. Uh, I want to thank the kids that were in the track program. They made it very exciting every time we went somewhere. It was definitely uh, a good time every time we traveled. Uh, first off, uh, I want to recognize Jesse Sanchez for making it all the way to state and winning the 200. <laughs> she almost came in second in the 400, so she had a very, very good year uh, for her and for the track program. She is also the winner of our High Point Award and Outstanding Running Event, Jesse Sanchez. <laughs> Some other awards that we're going to give out, the uh, Outstanding Field Events Award. This goes to a young lady who not only placed in multiple uh, track meets that we had, but also got better uh, as the year went on. In our regional, the additional qualifiers all came out of our regional, so she had a very tough time uh, make, uh, trying to beat them out. But next year, we think that uh, she can really do it, and that is Oh, Chaplin, come on, I almost forgot your first name. <laughs> she did really, really well. Our next award uh, goes to the most improved. I don't know if she's in the building. When she started off, she started off as a uh, uh, hurdler and then decided she wanted to do the high jump, uh, struggled a little bit, changed a few things up, and eventually got to where she was clearing the first mark and start competing in, in a lot of the events that we were in, and that is Kyla Howard. Our final award tonight goes to an individual who's the Indian Pride Award. Uh, he is a senior who showed up every day, not only in the offseason, but uh, even did a lot on his own. The work ethic is just impressive. <laughs> And if everybody uh, that, that came out in any sport had his work ethic, we, we would probably be a state champion year-round, and that is Hunter Hampton. Like I said, I want to thank, uh, thank these coaches and these kids for making track and break job experience for me this year, and uh, good things to come. Good track! Woo! <laughs> Coach next up is our girls softball slow pitch, Coach Myron Bowling. Hello and good evening. Uh, I want to welcome everyone here and thank you to the parents, faculty, staff, everyone that was involved with the softball team and getting us and getting the where we need to go and parents help get the girls to where they need to be for the ball game, and especially to the kids for coming out and practicing the way that they did throughout the uh, winter months, you know, even up to the spring. Even when we got to the springtime, it felt like winter time to you. It was cold and wet and rainy. Um, softball girls, if you're here, come on up. These young ladies put in a lot of hard work out, like I said, out in the cold. And sometimes it was a little bit rainy outside. But they uh, never complained, went outside and practiced hard, and gave it all they had in their ball games. I see we don't have everybody here. We're going to pass out our uh, certificates for the softball leagues. The first is Lila Davenport. <laughs> Audra Fourkiller. 
Jamin Gann. Emily Grayson. Robin Grimmett. Katie Holmes. Sylviana Martinez. Tara Al. Kirsten Robinson, Robinson, Gracie Scott. No? Okay. Well, we made that kind of short for us. We didn't have a whole lot of girls to work with. Uh, but now we, these girls that were here last year, and it was tough getting to find uh, new new recruits for them. We tried to ask everyone, but these girls stayed with it and played hard and uh, battled in all the ball games that they were in. It was a rough and tough and learning season. And the seniors that we have, we thank them for the leadership they gave us and uh, participation and encouraging the girls when they did. And we have a foundation to build on for next year for the girls that will be here. So uh, with that, we have some awards also. Our defensive player award goes to our shortstop, Hayden Woods. <laughs> Offensive player is Robin Grimmett. And we had a, another defensive award for the other side of Hayden at second base. We called that one the Stosti Glove Award. She caught some hot shots and put in some holes over there. But both of the girls did a great, great outstanding job uh, stopping the ball that went up the middle. Uh, Tyra Al. Then our MVP, inspirational person, um, always giving out 100% effort and uh, trying hard and encouraging everybody, inspirational, goes to our outfielder, Lila Davenport. <laughs> thank you to Coach Mayfield for everything he's done, and I want to say thank you to everyone for coming out and seeing the girls and watching what you did. And this is your 2018 Slow Pitch Team. Thank you. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, again, just like uh, Coach Foreman said in soccer, wish they were playing this weekend. Also, wish they were playing this weekend. Also, uh, baseball, Coach Tim Barton. South Greasy, show up here because this is a big event right here, so I just want to recognize Andy. Everybody. Uh, before I get to the baseball, I want to uh, recognize the people that do a lot for our program, some young ladies. So if Beverly would come forward, Skyler. Alexis could make it tonight. Alexis Sanders and our, is she here? All right, she made it, she didn't know. And we want to recognize our baseball queen, Miss Abaddon. Come on. Seven and eight 
record. A really great bunch of kids. You know, you don't get to take kids to Phoenix, Arizona, or San, or, uh, San Antonio, or places where we go if they're not good kids. And this is really, really a good group of kids. We have few here. There's all together. There's kind of 30 kids all together. So they have something important to do tonight. I understand. But uh, I want to. You had our senior awards tonight to our two seniors, uh, Jordan Wiggins, who signed with Connors today. He's our 96th. <laughs> our other senior is probably going to sign this summer, Billy McNack. Two great guys. Okay, we want to give out some uh, couple of awards, and these are for freshman kids that make a contribution. We had a freshman that had to step up and play shortstop because our shortstop had surgery and uh, filled some big shoes. Tyson, last year as a sophomore, set our school record for base hits in a season. So he had big, big shoes to fill. And our, one of our couple of awards goes to Jeremiah Noah's Water. <laughs> Our other pup is a big pup. <laughs> we had more fun with this guy, I promise you. We had a lot of fun. He's got a great attitude. All the kids love him. They love to pick on him, and he picks back. John McElroy. Hey, <laughs> Our Silver Slugger Award this year went to a guy who hit 498. Um, and he's, he's not only a good hitter, but uh, he controls our game behind the plate. Had six steal attempts against him this year. He threw out four, and I think the other two might be in pass balls. I don't know. Jordan Wiggins, Silver Slugger. <laughs> our Fireman of the Year is out putting out a fire, I guess, because he's not here tonight. <laughs> and uh, this kid is an anomaly to me. He is the most shy, backward kid ever. And I'm going to really talk about him since he's not here tonight. <laughs> and he's a junior, and he has the ability to name what level he plays at next year. He's got enough ability to be all the way from a Juco to anywhere up to D1 to being drafted. And that kid that is, is special, Keaton Aspel. We had three guys tied for the Golden Glove Award. We give that based on fielding percentage. Three guys, uh, Bill McNabb. <laughs> Our most improved player this year Strides just unreal what he did as compared to where he was at last year, and that's Mr. Kyron. So, my <laughs> model athlete is out probably doing good deeds somewhere tonight because he's not here, and that is Jacob Armstrong. Okay, I want to thank Coach Crittenden, Coach Kennedy, and Coach Cochran. I've got the three best guys in the world to get to work with every day. Good Christian people to do things the right way. In five appearances in the NCAA Championship Tournament. In the 2002-2003 season, he got his team to a 32-3 and record and recorded Northeastern State University's loan NCAA Division II National Championship. He was inducted into the NSU Athletics Hall of Fame in 2004. Let's give a round of applause for Larry Gibson. All those statistics that, that uh, Lawrence read off, all that means is I coached a long time. I'm an old guy. I'm not coaching anymore. Uh, I did have a 40-year coaching career. I've been retired four years. I, I have spoken and attended plenty of athletic banquets, so I'm not going to talk very long. I understand uh, the, the situation. It seems to me that uh, 
there are basically three stakeholders at, at an athletic sports banquet. There are the most important stakeholders, the athletes themselves, uh, the coaches that pour their heart and soul into this, and the parents or family members, guardians of, of these young people. And all too often in my experience, especially observing high school uh, situations, parents and coaches, there's, there's too much friction, I think. And I would just like to speak to each group just a little bit and, and say what's uh, on my mind. I, I currently teach in the uh, health and kinesiology department. I teach a theory of coaching class. I teach a class called the Organization and Administration of High School Athletics. And we always talk about parental situations. And in Oklahoma, uh, we're running out of coaches, really. We don't have enough coaches to fill all the positions. And that's an unfortunate situation for me because I think coaching is the greatest profession in the world. And I thor thoroughly enjoyed my 40 years in it. Um, to the parents, I would say this. All coaches are trying to win. All coaches are putting the young men and women out on the field, the floor, the court, whatever the case may be that they think can put them in the best position to win. They, I've known good coaches, I've known bad coaches. I've never known a coach that played the wrong people purposely to try to lose. I've never known one. That doesn't mean that sometimes they might overlook a, a young person. I remember distinctly on one of my uh, one of my favorite college teams. I didn't start a kid until about six games to go in the year, and he turned into a catalyst that took us into a uh, state championship in in the junior college ranks here in Oklahoma. Uh, and I made a mistake with him, but it wasn't because I I purposely tried to to hurt him. Uh, I think that parents want the same things that coaches want. You want your, your youngster to learn how to work with other people, to learn to work hard, to learn to persevere, to learn to compete, to learn life's lessons. And athlete, uh, athletics is analogous to life itself. Uh, but your child is the most important thing to you and that's understandable and I wouldn't respect you if it wasn't that way. But the team is the most important thing to the coach. So I guess what I'm asking you to do is try to be as supportive as you can. The next time you want to complain about a coach, follow the Thomas Jefferson rule and uh, count to 10. And if that doesn't work, if you're still angry, count to 100. And then try to take the time to think about the coach's perspective. I don't think adversity, the, the best lessons I learned in life through athletics one of the things I learned was to handle adversity. And it's tough when your child has, is going through adversity, but they're much better off if they can deal with that adversity themselves and get through to the other side. We know you love them, we know you care about them, and we wanna work with you, I can speak for coaches in general, we wanna work with you to make this the best and most, the best possible, the greatest experience that we possibly can for the athletes that we coach. Coaches, what you owe these kids is your best effort every day. Your absolute best effort. I think that, you know, the tough thing about coaching, and one of the reasons that uh, I'm standing in front of you, I come from a working class home. I come from a background where nobody in my family went to college. I'm the first generation in my family to go to college. I had two brothers and a sister that followed me to college, probably because I went to college. And I went to college for one reason only, because a high school coach grabbed me in a lunch line where he was mad at me. Very first conversation I ever had with this guy, he called me a jackass and told me to shape up. And he said if I did, that I could, if I worked hard and listened to him, that I could go to college and be a college athlete. And instantly, almost instantly, I had a goal in life. I became a much better student. I became a much better person, a much better young person. And when I told my dad that night what he called me, my dad told me to quit acting like a jackass. So I had no alternative. His job was to make me the best person that I could be and to create an image of me, 
in me, and this is the challenge for coaches, create an image in your athletes of something better than the kids you coach think they can be. Get them to rise up above what they think they can do and do it and be surprised at doing it. It's a privilege to work with young people. I'm excited even now, 44 years into, into being an educator, I'm excited for the opportunity to go in a classroom and work with a bunch of young people. I'm not one that criticizes young people today. I'm not one that thinks the future is not bright. I think it's bright. And, and when I walk in that classroom, I want to give them, when I walked on the court, I wanted to give them the best effort that I had. Young people are variable, they're excitable, they're curious, they're frustrating. Sometimes you go, the, you, you look at them and you go, what in the world were you thinking? But you know what, the very next day they pick you up, they're fun to be around. And I don't know, you know, uh, Derek up here, Derek Kennedy's one of my former students and he asked me to speak tonight. He asked me if I miss coaching. There, I, I recognize when it was my time was over, but there's nothing like getting on that bus when you win a big game on the road that means something and riding back that 45 minutes, in my case, sometimes four and five hours, you know, that bus ride could last forever. That's the most fun I think you could have. So I challenge you coaches to do your best every day, come ready to go every day, be excited about who you are, because you're very important people to the young people in this community. To the, young, to the athletes in here, this is what I've got to say. I hope you get as much out of your high school career as I did. I was challenged by a tough, hard-nosed coach to be the best that I could be. I was challenged by him to be the best student I could be. I was challenged by him to be the best athlete that I could be. He taught me that improvement in athletics, like improvement in life, is a process. You show up every day, you lace your sneakers up tight, and you go to work, and you work as hard as you can. And if you get knocked down, you get yourself back up, and you try a little harder the next time. Only you, only you in the morning when you're looking in the mirror, at night before you go to bed when you're looking in the mirror, only you can say if you gave it your best effort that day. Being an athlete means you have to sacrifice on many different levels. You can't be out goofing around on the weekends like some of the, some of the other uh, kids are doing. You have to persevere sometimes. You have to make it a point that you're gonna, that you're gonna do your best when you don't feel like doing your best. You've got teammates that are relying on you. You've got coaches that are relying on you. You need to push yourself when a lot of, when, when it seems like, you know, that it, there's no hope. That shot that crawled up over the rim, I've been a part of a few of those. Those are exciting and exhilarating and it's fun to see a young person grow and get out of their, get out of their own way and become what we think they could be. When I was a young man, I was 15 years old, my dad took me to a, uh, took me to hear Woody Hayes speak. Woody Hayes was a famous football coach. I grew up in Ohio. For those of you that never heard of Woody Hayes, and you probably wouldn't, this was in the 1960s, he, uh, he was the Bob Stoops. You know, what Bob Stoops is to Oklahoma, he was to Ohio. And a, and a coach, at, or a, a father stood up and said, my son wants to know what it takes to be a champion, and you're a, uh, you're a winner, you've won up, up countless Big Ten championships, national championships. Woody looked around the room, took off his glasses, thought a while, and he said, if your son wants to be a champion, tell him to get up off the mat one more time than the other guy. In other words, persevere and fight your way through the hardships that life throws at you. And I thought to myself at that time, I was not the best basketball player in my class. I was not the biggest kid or the strongest kid, but I thought, you know what, I can do that. That's what I can do. That's the niche. And so I would challenge all the athletes in here Make sure you're tough enough to get up off the floor, off the court, off the ground, off the mat one more time than your opponent. If you can persevere like that, then you, you'll be a champion. The last thing I want to leave you with is a, uh, I'm going to read a poem, not a very long poem. It's by an Irish poet. When I was a sophomore in college, I had three, two knee surgeries and I shattered my collarbone. I had a, a third surgery and I missed essentially two, two years of my college career. And I was uh, 
moping around, depressed probably. And the, the, the thing that, was, that I loved the most was taken away from me and an English professor that I had uh, sensed that I was struggling to kind of search and find myself. And he gave me this poem to read and think about. It's called, By Your Own Soul, Learn to Live. And I think for the young people in here, this is what you're searching for, your own personal place, your meaning in life. It's by Packenham Baby. I'm cleaning up, up a little bit. It's in, it's in uh, Old English. He was an Irish poet. By your own soul, learn to live. If man hate you, pay no heed. If man thwart you, have no care. Sing your song, dream your dream, pray your prayers. By your own soul, learn to live. I think if all of us in this room followed that, discovered who we were, don't worry about it, what anyone else thinks, do your best, work your hardest, dream your dream, pray your prayers, those young people, that have signed to go to college, cherish that. That's a great opportunity. It's an exceptional opportunity to play college athletics. Take advantage of it. People here tonight, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and be a part of this program. I thank you very much, and I, I wish everyone in here the best. Thank you. There you get some fired up right here. Ready, ready to go. Okay, next uh, we'll be uh, presenting our Booster Club Awards. Um, first up, we'll have our Sportsman Short Sportsmanship Award, male and female. this year and um, let me just tell you about how we get to these people um, we contact all the coaches they you can hear me <laughs> okay. we contact your coaches they are the ones who will nominate you and then we get all of our names together and we vote as the booster club and um, so and you, uh, it also depends on how many times you've gotten nominated. So, to the, uh, this year's Sportsmanship Award for female is Kalaja Bishop. Mike, and he trusted me to take care of Mike 
you know, guiding each other. Like, it meant the world to me. And uh, he'd come to practice every day. And when I had a little break, Stan would come by and say, Coach, what do I need to do to help you? And he would he would go fix something at the ball field every day and never wanted anything in return, just wanted to be helpful. We have a guy like that here tonight, Chris Crittenden. You know, honestly, I didn't realize that he didn't work here. <laughs> I didn't know that until about a week ago. <laughs> um, so, our next award is our Kawatha um, Barterman Award. Um, Tommy? This award goes to uh, what we call our biggest fan, and the Barnum family usually brings us a nominee in that <laughs> um, It's an honor to be here and do this. Uh, I'm Tommy Barnum, um, grandson of Hiawatha, and she was a uh, one of the biggest fans, as, as the award says, that, that I know, and. Um, she was there for, for a lot of stuff, and um, like I said, it's an honor to do this. Uh, you can always hear, you know, especially when the football games up with you know, Bradley Field, whenever they were making, when the umpires were making bad calls, she, she let them know about it. And sometimes at the games, I go back now, and I'm sitting there, and I'm listening, and I can see her granny back here up on the top, still yelling at the referees. And I look and I see this Barbie doing it, so you know, it's staying in the family. <laughs> but um, the, the person that's getting this fan, this, this award fan, I've, uh, I've seen this gentleman um, at stock shows. I know it's not, you know, a, a sports award, sports, you know, event, but I've seen the stock shows, supporting kids, supporting people at the stock shows and stuff. Um, and that was that was my what I did. I, was, I showed cattle and stuff, so. I know how he how he was there, and I can just imagine how he is at, at sports events being a fan. But how about the Barton Biggest Fan Award goes to Brendan Vaughn. So 
So how this is done is every coach gives us a paper that tells every accomplishment that the, that the athletes do. You get points for that, and you get points for every year that you letter. You get point. You get points for every sport that you play, every accomplishment that you have, and that is how we get to our outstanding athletes. The booster club has decided to start giving a scholarship with this. So tonight's male outstanding athlete is Jordan Wiggins. district quarterback of the year two years in a row three rivers by top 100 for baseball and three rivers by football top 100 all state honorable mention for football and all conference for basketball This year we made another kind of uh, decision and I personally I'm pretty sure a lot of these kids wondered why I had their phone numbers <coughs> uh, so I personally got a hold of every senior athlete and asked them who their favorite coach is so we've added this year a coach of the year award that is picked by the senior athletes and that coach is Michael Foreman. Got his 1,000 career win. 
And here's his achievements include state champions in 1985, 1987, 1990, state runner-ups in 1997, state semifinalists in 1998, regional champions seven times, district champions 31 times, regional runners-up 14 times, regular season tournament champions 45 times, state record for most seasons with 30 or more wins five times, state record for most wins by a graduating class 143 by class of 1998. School record for most consecutive wins at home, 54. School board, school record for most consecutive wins to, be, to begin a season, 25 in 1985. <coughs> school record most seasons with a winning record, 34. School record fewest seasons with a losing record, zero. Led team to 40 wins in a season in 1997. Just saying, that's when I graduated. <laughs> Led team to 30 or more wins in 30 or more wins 17 times. Led team to 20 or more wins in a season 33 times. <coughs> Lost nine games or less in a season 23 times. Ranked number one for at least one week in. 1985, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 98, and 2018. Oklahoma Coaches Association Rookie of the Year, Rookie Coach of the Year in 1985. Oklahoma Coaches Association Coach of the Year in 1990. <laughs> Oklahoma Coaches Association <laughs> Regional Coach of the Year in 98. Head Coach of the Large East all-state team in 92, Coach six All-Staters, Steve Barton in 85, Victor Payton in 87, Sh uh, Shannon Poteet and Brandon Forkiller in 90, Jay Kester in 92, and David Goodrich in 97. Has beaten teams from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Te Kansas, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, <coughs> Arizona and California. And we also have a special guy here who wants to give him his award. So let's hear it from Mr. Tim, Coach Tim Martin. Track champion in the 200, Jesse Sanchez.
Greg Stewart, Blood Troopers. Greg. I was told that Greg had uh, some, a couple of awards that he wanted to give out to uh, a couple couple guys and yes, girls. Yes, Okay. Yeah. became aware of a possible record in soccer this year and we had a lot of records broken in football, basketball, all the sports. But soccer doesn't get the, the, the press. So I wanted to go ahead and, and recognize these two men. The first for scoring a school record seven goals in one game, Kane Kimball. <laughs> and that was against Westville, and that makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> and the final one is presented to a goalie who started soccer last season. He, he didn't even have all the equipment to practice in in the cold when, when he was a junior. But he made the team. And this year he set a, not only a school record, but an Oklahoma high school record. And I did get that confirmed. Most saves in the season, Mr. K.J. Ross. This year off the uh, off the guys team. Uh, first all stater, uh, our goalkeeper, KJ Ross. And this is uh, Kane Kimball, all stater as a forward. guys uh, will be playing the uh, 4A uh, All-State game on June 9th in uh, Broken Arrow. So uh, if you all have time on that day, you might support them because I'll be sure to be there. Thanks, guys. Okay, so every year we give out what they call a Mark Mullen Scholarship Award. He likes to give back to where he graduated from and we usually just send him all the names that that are graduating and he goes through and picks it out so pre so presented in recognition of achievement on and off the playing field with a scholarship of five hundred dollars to Billy McNeck.
stand up. Elijah Bishop. Okay, keep standing. <laughs> Uh, she is enrolled at NSU, hopefully to pursue a degree in political science. Anna Blair. <laughs> Anna plans on going to NSU to get her basics and transferring to OU to get a degree in pharmacy. Chloe Brown plans on going to NSU for pre-med and then transferring to medical school. Jordan Collins. Carl Albert and while taking a phlebotomy class and able to be a surgical tech. Karen Diver. <laughs> plans on attending Rogers State University pursuing a degree in accounting. Alexa Peterson has enrolled at OU for studies in pre -med, in the pre-med program. Kayla Grimes is attending the U of A to pursue occupational therapy. Robin Grimmett. She plans to attend Carl Albert and get her associate's degree in allied health and transfer to continue her education in a university to become a radiologist. Timber Hardbarker. She will be heading to NSU on the President's Leadership Class Scholarship and will be majoring in Health and Human Performance. Lauren Isaacs. She will be attending NSU and majoring in Speech Pathology. Casey Kimball. Be attending NSU to pursue a degree in optometry. Caitlin King Cade. She will be attending JBU pursuing a bachelor's degree in photography and a master's in business. Rosalia. She plans on getting her BSN and pursuing a master's science in Scott plans on attending NSU 
thing and then deciding on what he wants to do after a couple of years. <laughs> Thomas Fluke plans to look for local opportunities while deciding on future endeavors. Felix Gray. He plans on attending NSU and studying pre-law or business. Jimmy Glenn. Wants to pursue a degree in nuclear engineering. Hunter Hampton plans on working his way to Norman to attend OU. Kyle Holland wants to pursue a degree in computer engineering. Patrick Hewling plans on attending NSU and pursuing sports medicine. Kane Kimball. Blake Longshore wants to attend NSU for a, at least a year and transferring to OU Medical and leaning towards a degree as an anesthesiologist. Logan Maddox. <laughs> he plans to attend NSU and get a degree in architecture. Billy McNett.